How y'all doing? Um, appreciate y'all coming out. So this presentation is just me and Manjong putting it together so that you know we can enlighten y'all on any information y'all not aware of, just to give you some more pointers as far as the kids and make sure that they reach their full level of success by the time they graduate. So I'm gonna start off, start off with the high school graduation rate. So this right here is just exemplifying people of color and financial hardships have a big determining factor in kids' success. So it could have them not caring, feeling embarrassed, closed, whatever the case is. Um, people of color, again, we're most likely to grad, um, drop out. So me as a first generation college student, I know that was big for my family because nobody had done that before. And so a lot of these kids feel like they can't do it or you know, they have, may not have seen it before being done. So we're here to make sure that they're in school. So parents, this is key, key, key. Um, I don't think anybody in here has any problems with their kids coming to school, but overall, <laughs> um, attendance, you know, it reduces the risk of dropping out and the kids losing interest. Um, increased chance of receiving additional academic support. So for kids who need help with math or English or whatever the case is, if they're not here, then they can't get no help. They can't ask questions. They can't get that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, limited chance to fall behind, miss assignments, and or retake a class due to failing. And so when kids fall behind, they feel like they can't, you know, make things up. So what are they going to do? Give up, not try, etc. Same thing with being behind, missing assignments, or rehabbing, having to retake a class. Um, if a kid fails a class, their interest is going to go down. If they got to take that same class next year with kids who are not even in the school yet, Embarrassment is going to come, all their friends and things like that, and it's just going to make it harder for them to catch up and graduate on time by the end of their four years. Um, coming to school on time and every day, it teaches responsibility and accountability for when they head into the real world. We can't just not go to work because <laughs> we don't want to, or else our bills will not get paid, we won't have food, etc. Um, and more opportunity to participate in school-related programs and activities. So the opportunity to take early college courses, um, paid business courses in the CTE program we have to where they can take a class and you know, get paid, you know, learn real world internships, hands on things. College and career field trips, same thing, going to see that exposure, seeing things they're not accustomed to. And so attendance, and <laughs> attendance is, is, is the biggest part. And I know with COVID, I know it messed a whole lot of things up, um, but we gotta, we gotta get back. <laughs> We gotta get back. And so next, I'm gonna have Armand come up. He is uh, currently a sophomore, and he will be a rising junior. And so he's just gonna discuss how his sophomore year went and some things that he has learned along the way. All right, so first off, first off, one of the classes that I took, one of the main classes I took that helped me like, learn more was financial planning. So basically in that class, what they talked to us about is how to manage our money, how to invest, and how to make smart decisions and different banks to invest in. So, firstly, it's taught us about how stocks, how when you invest in a stock, you're, you're purchasing like, a small percentage of a company. And then, after that, it taught us about a marketplace, how to tell different stocks from which. And then, we were able to play a, a um, stock market game which let us do get like, more hands on about it. So basically what Star gave was it gave us a hundred thousand dollars to start off with. And then from there you invest your money and keep track of it. For like what stocks is, you have to you have to like keep it track, like you try to keep looking at it to know if it goes up or down. So whenever a stock go whenever a stock goes down, you have to know to trade it or keep it or or you can just leave it because the minimum year you're supposed to leave a stock there is the five years let it build up but in the game we invested in multiple stocks like amazon they had amazon tesla and all that and you would gain and lose money but like when a stock when you're losing money in certain places you don't always want to pull your, your money out because then that's more, not so money with you when it could have went shot right back up you could gain more money so that's one of the things and and taught us like how to like like checking accounts and other things. And that's it about that class. So other thing is 
other than the class, the teacher is more, it's more like more attention and more help. Cause when I have questions, the teacher is able to ask it, like answer, answer my questions, and more hands on and study and all that. And other things like in math class when I was with Miss Parker, like she also helped me in other classes and I understand my math better than it was when I was on ingenuity. So that's another thing. That's pretty much it. Nicely done. Sir. <laughs> I guess that's me. I'm Michelle Dodson. I am the uh, master English teacher here, master teacher English leader. I don't know what the title is, but anyway, I do a lot of English stuff. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about PSAT, ACT, SAT, national exams. Um, we know that in the past couple years, colleges have suspended the use of national exams as one of the ways that they make a decision about when to accept a child. That is going away as we get back in, into school full time, as students get back into having access to the assessments, then that too shall uh, go by the wayside. So I'm going to uh, kind of cover a couple of those things with you today. Um, I'm way over here. We have all these great things, but this one was plugged in way over here. So I'm going to really quickly go through this with you. Um, Pre-ACT is for 10th grade students. So we, this is a state assessment, and so students take the, the pre-ACT um, in October. And right about the same time, about a week later, they'll take the PSAT, unfortunately. But um, basically, especially for you students who may not realize why you take these things, um, it's a baseline, right? So like if I'm taking an English class with Ms. Dodson at PLC and my friend is taking an English class with Ms. Owings at Independence and another friend is taking, right, like even though we teach from the same standards and we have our district policies, etc., an A in my class may not be the same as an A in another class in another class. And so colleges will use standardized, national standardized tests as that measure to put everybody on the same field. Okay, um, and so that's why we do that. That's why we take that. It helps you also with your goals. If the students take the pre-ACT, they're going to get some really neat results. One of the things we want to learn is that um, you have strengths, you guys, that other people don't have. We all have strengths in different areas, right? So, like, if I need to know when the asteroid's going to hit the Earth, I'm not asking Green Lantern. I want to know from Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's got, he's got the know. He's in the know, right? So we, we know that people have certain things that make them special for who they are. One of the things that will happen with the PSAT and the ACT is that you, students will get a, a, some results that show them uh, where they kind of fall on, on the career wheel. So this is the career wheel, and it's segmented out, and when your student gets the report back, it'll show that they're strong communicators, and so maybe these are the kind of um, careers they would be good at. So that's very important. The score reports that they're going to get will give them an opportunity to compare themselves to what it would be for an ACT. So if they take the pre-ACT, it gives them a report that said, if this had been the ACT today, this would have been your composite score. So a composite is an average of math, reading, science, and um, English. And then they even have a STEM score, which is the average of the, of the science and the math. Colleges, I'm going to point to this number here. Colleges look at this number, right? And so as the number increases, so too do the opportunities for your students. Uh, and we're going to post this up for you on our site because there are links here to cfnc.org. That's the College Foundation of North Carolina. Uh, ACT information. Uh, there's a thing called Road Trip Nation that's associated with CFNC. And it's very similar to some of the things that Ms. Roshan going to talk to you about, um, about Naviance. And I know you guys have started using Naviance in Homeroom. Um, and it's just a way for students to begin to plan their careers and their paths after high school. Uh, the ACT, so that if the pre-ACT is in 10th grade, the ACT administration is in March, their 11th grade year. So the state pays for these assessments. If you lived in some place other than North Carolina, you, you would have to pay out of pocket for these tests. North Carolina provides this. So in 11th grade, 
what do your students get for that? They get a college reportable score. They get, um, you know, stakeholders get information about uh, college and career goal setting. Um, and of course, this all is in, all hinges on the fact that your child is actually taking the test seriously, right? That's the kind of thing we, we need to get across to them. This, these assessments are only as good as a student actually puts the time into doing as best as they can. And that's where we come in helping them understand that. Uh, in 11th grade also, the students take the PSAT. They also take it in 10th grade. So the district gives them a 10th grade opportunity to practice. And then in 11th grade, they take it again. You'll notice that there's a slash NMSQT. That stands for National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. It's a big mouthful. So the 10th grade year, they get to practice it. But in 11th grade, their score could possibly get them lots and lots of access to funding for college, depending on how well they do on that SAT, PSAT. It's administered in 10th grade for the first time, again in 11th grade. Um, this actually says, will they or won't they? And this is what I talked about with colleges. Some of them are right now. Right now, we're about up to 63.5% of the colleges have returned to using the PSAT and ACT results. Um, I'm giving you a place here where you can click to look at what the cutoff scores are for North Carolina high schools, excuse me, North Carolina universities for ACT and also for SAT. So if you get a 19 or a 20 on your ACT and you want to go to Duke University, well, it's not a state school, you want to go to NC State, NC State has a different cutoff. You may, you may need to look at some other schools or you may need to practice, study, retake the ACT. If you know where you're going, then you know how to get there. Okay, um, so more, more, more. What do I mean by that? If you keep your options open, students, I'm talking to you again, um, there are lots of places you can go, and that's what these assessments are going to help you do. Okay, give you the possibilities because it's better for you to have more choices than not enough. Okay, keys for you, obviously, take college, uh, encourage your child to take challenging courses. Okay. Explore lots of career options. We're building some of that into the curriculum next year as well. Set career goals. We take students places. They get an opportunity to look at different things. I would be remiss as an English teacher, 36-year English teacher, <laughs> if I did not tell you that read, read, read. I get students all the time, Ms. Dodson, what can I do? I'm in 10th grade. I need to improve my read. Starting in, not, starting in kindergarten. But if you're coming to high school and you're not a reader, it's just not something you enjoy doing, it's just like anything else. The more you do it, the better you are. Example, a student who reads 20 minutes a day at the end of, uh, let's say this is the end of, uh, of sixth grade, students will read 8,000 words if they just read one minute a day. If they read five minutes a day, they're looking at 282,000 words in a school year. And if you read 20 minutes a day, that's 1,800,000 words that you are seeing, understanding, looking at in different contexts, internalizing as part of your working vocabulary. So just like learning to drive a car, just like ride, learning to ride a bike, the more you do it, the better you are. Okay. Thank you for your kind attention. I shall now pass it on to Ms. Parker. <laughs> uh, by the way, I have uh, copies of this if you would like. Anybody else want one of these? Oh, Ms. Parker, I did forget one thing. Can I tell them real quick? Sure. Go right ahead. So this document that I'm giving you now was last year. So students will get another one. This is like a three. Did you get one? This is a, the coolest book ever. I love it. So on the green side, I'm going to give you a demonstration. On the green side, this is the student guide. So you can kind of look through this information. And it tells you about the test. If you flip it over to the blue side, that's where all the information is about the NMSQT. And if you, I feel like Vanna White, I'm so excited. If you take it apart, they have a practice test inside. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Salutations, parents and the students. Yeah. My name is Mrs. Parker, and everybody loves all of our students here. Thank you, parents, for bringing them to us. All the parents at home, I don't know where I'm looking at. But I just want to say your children, your scholars are in good hands with us and we enjoy them, and like Ms. Dotson alluded to, that English and reading is everything, but 
She left out math is the key to the top jobs. <laughs> All right, so the top job and the careers are starting with mastery mathematics, numbers, fluency, functions, trigonometry, and they say, when are we going to ever use this in all your jobs? So parents, as we talk about the number and the percentage, students who are going to be successful at the most um, scholarly type of honors classes, AP classes, online, um, North Carolina virtual public school coursework that will prepare them for post-secondary education, you start with, in eighth grade, taking Math 1. If you have not had Math 1 in 8th grade, by the time you get to Math 1 in ninth grade, you should have Honors Math 1, which we will talk about how this impedes upon your, your grade point average and your class ranking. We will talk to you about that later. But in the meantime, the parents that are here, I believe your children or your scholars are in Math 3. I know um, math three or math four, or they will be transitioning into math three and math four. So the thread for the math courses, it's functions. It's all about functions. Everyday solving realistic uh, events, building upon um, how do you do everything, everyday things that impact life. You can't do anything. You, if you work in a restaurant, your function is, you know when you open up at 8 o'clock, you got X amount of customers coming in. How much do I need to order my food? What, how many eggs? So forth and so on. That's functions. That's mathematics. Probability, mathematics. Mm, on Wednesday, we probably will have 30 customers in here. On Friday, if it's a payday, we will have 100. It's all about math and teaching them all about having your own. And guess what? Just like they have to read by themselves, they have to come home and practice math. It doesn't come easy. Yes, it's hard. So in math three, it's here. Math four, here. And by the time they get to college, they should feel comfortable with going into their first math class without it being a remedial math class and that's the whole thing so i have given you today i don't have a powerpoint but i want you to take that home discuss and share with your students what they are mastering in, in mathematics classes how it translated to real world applications and how they're going to move forward right now we're preparing for the end of course test how many parents are familiar with that word Yes, do you hear them talk about that now? <laughs> <laughs> no one I'm feeling warm. Okay. So let's start, parents. There's a schedule that you have in front of you where your students will be taking their end of course CTE and their teacher made exams. Math three. Raise your hand if your child is taking math three. All right, Math 3 exam will be the first one. So for Math 3, if you will look at the scope in the unit of the sequence, of course, Math 3, there are so many units we have. Nine, polynomial functions, modeling with functions, inverse functions. You see how functions keeps going on and on and on? That's what they need to be studying. And they have a packet and they have online work that comes home every day. If you don't have, if I don't say you have 10 problems to do, homework is every day. Every day you have to go back and practice. It's just like reading. We're clear about that? We're clear about that, students? Thank you. So without me being long-winded, math is important for life, for school, and to get the top jobs. If you can do math, all computer, all technology, engineering, anything. It's math. Start with making them cook more, learning fractions early. Don't be afraid to go back and revisit those basic skills at home as well. Again, I'm Mrs. Parker. Thank you for coming. Okay, moving right along. Thank you, Ms. Park and Ms. Dotson. My name is Tess Manjohn. I am the Instructional Accountability Facilitator. That's a lot to say that I do a lot of things. I'm over the testing, 
So all the information that Ms. Dotson gave you about the ACTV, I'm organizing all that, the EOCs. Uh, my right-hand person is Miss Ivy. You will meet her in a moment, um, and she'll talk about some other things. But I just want to give some credit out to my students. So, like I said, I do a lot of things. So the kids know all the extracurricular activity stuff, all these things we've got going on. It's my, my crew, and we get together and come together and do all these wonderful things. Miss Roshan, via Zoom, is included in that. And I just wanted to give a shout out. So the kids made affirmations. And we put them on there just to set the tone, right? So to think about believing in themselves. And we're always talking that into them. Um, and the wonderful thing about PLC, because it's small, we are really a family. These are our, we share. These are our babies when they are here. We really do love them. And so one of the things I have is like, I have the power to make my dreams come true. So let's talk about that, right? I am really big on making sure you are prepared to go where after leave here? Okay. Oh. Now, college and career. But I just believe we have some babies who are powerful. They can go to college. And we should have a way to do that. So let's just look at the first thing is the grade point average. You hear it? GPA. Okay? We talk about it all the time. Anytime someone's having trouble, they come into my room, I say, let's look at your grades. And let's break it down because sometimes they don't realize the components and how it works, right? So I always like to talk about the GPA. And this is, whole thing is to tell you that it's important. And it starts now. Ninth grade, tenth, it matters. They need to understand that. That GPA, right now we have all of our seniors, and we'll like to say that they're all either going to college or career. We have everybody set, all 22, okay? So, but we do that because we look at this and understand it, right? So, understanding, and some of them come late to the table. I have late, I have three kids. They're all three different types of beings, right? And they all did three different types of things. Thank you, God, I got them all in. But it was different places, right? And sometimes you're late. But to understand what affects that GPA, right? And we understand that colleges are looking at it. It's not the only thing, but the difference, like Ms. Dawson just talked to you about that PSAT. My niece, who just got her master's today, um, who in, in high school took that PSAT, got a high enough score, she was invited to Oxford in England and she went for a summer. Mm -hmm. So that PSAT, these tests are serious. And I know at the time, our teens are all over the place. They don't know where they want to go. And they'll tell you, I don't want to go to college. Right now, I have seniors, juniors who are like, oh, I've been messing up. This man, John, I want to go. What are we going to do? Let's just remember that these GPAs are big deals. Ms. Dawson talked about taking challenging classes. You want to do that, but you don't want to overdo it either. You want to want to make your child take an AP in biochemistry if that is not their strength. Work in their strength, right? I have artists, Ms. Rima the singer. We have people who can go into, right? They need to work in their strengths. Take an AP class in that, what you love, what your passion is, so that it helps that GPA because you have the unweighted. So our classes are credit a piece, right? But once they start taking the AP, or I'm not sure about the CPCC, but I know the AP classes are weighted. That helps, right? I had one kid, my son, who graduated with the, out of high school. He had like a 2.8. My baby daughter had a 4.6. There's a difference, right? She was an AP nut. That was her thing. I was just thanking you, Jesus, that my son did it. Right? He read his book. She wanted to read and write a book. So that's what I'm saying. It's a difference. Um, and, but they all got in. So... That's the point, it doesn't matter what. So the grades, just to know, your A is a four, right? Your B is a three, your C is a two, and your D is a one. And we don't even get, well, first of all, they know I don't even consider these three, right? C is see you later. I'm sorry, that, that's just it. This is where we need to be. Right. Above and the beyond, right? Okay, about to go beyond, we got it. This is where we gotta go, and this is what counts, this is what makes our GPA. So I just wanna show you that we can play around this. They're gonna be doing this during, um, Testing, because some of them will have EOC, some of them will not. If they do come to school, they'll have the opportunity to look at how and play around with their GPA to understand what it means. How does this make a difference? So here, um, let's say we do math for Ms. Parker. My sister was also a math teacher. That is not my thing. But <laughs> math is their thing. And let's just say, in high school, the classes are credit, right? FYI, in college, there are three or four credits. 
So this thing you can play around with, right? So let's say we do um, bio, and let's say we do English, and some kind of social studies class. And we make these all one credit. And you guys will be able to play with this to see those of you guys who are um, my seniors who are getting ready to go to college, they'll do regular classes. And remember we talked about AP weighted, right? So I can change it. Let's say I take that math anonymous pocket and we get an AP class, right? So we're going to weight that and then we're going to keep these regular. And if I go ahead and go to, um, oh, grades, to go to grades, and in that weighted class, I'm going to take that A+. Plus, right? Hawk can knock that out the park. The kids got it. Okay? Science might not be my thing. I got a B. My English, um, let's say we just got flat A. And my social studies, I got a B. And what this is showing you, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's this 3.8. That's nice. Guys, that's nice, right? Most colleges are looking... You can get in, like I said, my son, and he's working on his master's. So, yes, dreams do come true. <laughs> so, but, you know, I worried about him, but he's got it. But you can do it. Most, you can get into college at 2.8, but that three, that's that sweet part, right? Because at that point, you have some options, and we're going to talk about that as we keep going on. I'm going to add one part. And uh -huh. then also with this website, too, for not everybody has a 3.8. So uh -huh. say COVID messed them up. So right. say okay. they have a one eight right now and three credits. This right here, as you can see, uh, this is you. what they got from the semester right. that bumped them up a whole That's right. one thing, one point. And you don't know how many kids come in yes. and I do just that. I just had that to show them and they go, wait, what? It's not a lost cause. I don't care if you waited to the last semester. Uh -huh. We can make something happen, right? Mm -hmm. So this is it. I never let a student come in and say, oh, I can't do it. I've got to want something, I can't do it. Yes, we can. Watch. Just got to you gotta put that work in. We're going to put this work in and we're going to make this happen. And if that means you need to come sit in my room to get it done, we're going to get it done. But that's what we're looking at, okay? So just to let you know, like Ms. Dotson said, Ms. Parker, we're going to have links on our website so you can go and look at these resources and play within them yourselves. Well, we're going to have the students do it so that they can go with their current GPA and start predicting, right, what happens next semester. So that's one piece. Um, um, so I always say it's your currency. We start talking <coughs> money. Armand did a fantastic job talking to you about investment and what we're doing yes, with our money. Did. Okay? He had that going on. This GPA right now, I was always told my school was my job. My parents told me this was my job. And this was money for me, okay? This is what it's looking at. Right now, my, my seniors are seeing it. There was a difference. My son who got a 2.8, you think he got, he got some things, but did he get a full ride? No, the one with the 4.6 did. So this is the thing, and that's money. That's what we're talking about. So we're talking about whether it's the ACT, PSAT, SAT. Unfortunately, they're bringing that back. I have my own feelings. Even though I'm a testing person, I have my own feelings about that. But this is a reality. That's what it is, and some schools will be asking for it again. Make sure for you to get these scholarships, this is the ticket. Okay, like I said, I had three go in. I'm in debt. That's why I'm trying to work with my, and I have three degrees. Come for parents. With, it's not easy. This financial aid thing is a beast, and it will make you go, don't bother. Don't do it. And I don't want you to do that because I've learned from my mistakes, I'm passing it on to them to let them say, don't do it. Wait, let's look at this. Don't give up. But if we make sure this is right, right, then we can work with this. Because there are scholarships for young, black, young, Latinx, young, this. You want black and STEM, black and, and uh, Latino, and anything. But the requirement, that GPA is non-negotiable. So when you look up that scholarship, and that scholarship says you need a three, they mean that. They're not taking you in, you send your application, it's a 2.5, you're not even getting read, right? You could have met all the other criteria. That's what I'm talking about, that GPA is your currency. We want to make sure we're on that. Um, I'm just going to roll in because we're running late, so I'm just going to keep going. So the college and career process, so I'm a maniac about this, right? And all of us are, and so with, our college and career with Ms. Roshan, killing it with the CT and the CPCC classes. Kids are coming out of here getting college credits already. Um, we want to make sure that we understand what to do. Starts now. 
Now, what are we doing? Talk to them about what they want to do. I went to college. Now, in terms of that, we're a head start. And that's what we want to talk about, that head start. And even if we're behind, we got to know that you can still do it, OK? Um, the don'ts, like we talked about, don't, don't look and jump and demand your kids go to certain schools. Step back. Let them think about it. Talk about what they want to do, not what you want to do, right? My middle daughter, also very bright, went to A&T. She was going to be a doctor. I kept going. But I said, OK. She graduated. OK, let's talk about medical school. Had a breakdown. Because it wasn't real. She was thinking about money, but it wasn't her passion. Now she's at CPC getting an associate's. No, I wish she would have done it when she went to got a, a graduate, a bachelor's degree. But she's getting another degree now in art because that's her passion and she's killing it. But this is what I'm saying, we gotta listen to them. Don't push, because sometimes you gotta step and figure it out on your own. But just kind of be there with them and know, listen, I know this is your passion, I know this is your strength, let's work in that. The same thing about classes you take, you go to the co go on those colleges. My kids all did HBCUs, I went to Howard, there were parents who had their kids in elementary school walk in that college already setting their minds in the mode. They're there, understand this is what we're talking about. Get that going and understand that. Again, we'll have these links for you. Um, the financial aid, this is the beast. This will drive you nuts. Um, I have a link, but I'm gonna put a link on the website. But I have, I gave you these pay, uh, some references, right? So you should have this yellow one. Right now, if your child is in 11th grade, you can start that financial aid process, okay? You want to get ahead of the game. If you're filing your taxes, there is somewhere on, if you do it yourself, now if you don't do it yourself, that's something else, but when you go into the financial aid, it'll show you, if you filed your taxes, you click a button, and it will br automatically bring that information in. This has held up so many students that I've been dealing with because they don't know this piece, and so now we're trying to be proactive, right, to make sure that you understand that. It's on here. If you follow this, uh, this is coming from the, uh, the College Board. If you follow the link that um, I'll give out for the resource, you can see and understand it, how to go about doing it. In this one, this gives you a nice overview, OK? Um, do we need money for our college or career? Um, it's going to tell you about applying. There are certain things, like one little tip, like the, there's student parent plus loan. Um, and honestly, I'm just going to say this. Hopefully, you're not, you, you don't do it, because it's, it's, it's a loan that goes on you. But I did it, because why? My kids were gone. That was just my mindset. But the thing about it is if you apply for it and you get denied, they bump it back to the schools, and the schools up their students' money. So I try to tell parents, listen, it, I don't know where your money is, I don't know where your credit is, but if you do it, it will, if they deny you, that gives back to the school, and they give you more money, OK? They give the student more money, whether it's in scholarships, because they can't get the scholarships from the school unless that financial aid performance filled out, OK? Does that make sense? Other than merit, now, if you have a merit, your child is a 3.0, and let's say Winston-Salem State gives a 3.0 kids merit-based scholarship. Merit-based scholarship is just on schoolwork. However, if they have Pell Grants, other, other, I'm not, well, Pell Grants, but other grants or loans or scholarships they want to give out, if a student, they're going to base it on what that financial aid says. Does that make sense? So it's, 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 it's so uh, convoluted, but the bottom line, if you do this, the school looks at it, and they generate what else they can give to your student. But they won't give you that other thing until they've gotten this. The only thing they will give you is the merit based on your GPA. Does that make sense? OK, anyway, if I didn't do a great job at it, it's in here, OK? And if you have any questions, you can always come see. Because while I'm doing it, I'm learning more about it, and I'm understanding the process. And you know, I hate to say it, third time is a charm, right? I finally got it right on the end. That's what this is about. We want to make sure the last thing I want to tell you is this North Carolina residency. This is the easiest thing. But it has to be done. If your child is going to go to school in-state and you want that in-state tuition, North Carolina has some great in-state schools. I mean, here's the deal. 
they have some highly rate in-state schools. But you can't get that in-state uh, tuition unless you do this North Carolina. So I'm just going to click on this. The student has to register here to determine if they are a, a, a resident in North Carolina. So that's the difference. If you go look at any of your UNC to um, uh, A&T, it's going to give you two different intu tuitions, out-of-state and in-state. Now, obviously, that in-state is a heck of a lot less than that out-of-state. You can't get that in-state unless you do this. So this year, I did a spreadsheet to make sure that everyone finished their residency and everyone got their financial aid uh, forms done. Okay, and that's what you want to make sure happens. Okay, and that's and it's real simple. This is really easy, <coughs> and this doesn't require a whole lot. But if you're going to get a number that they're going to have to use when they do the applications for college. Okay, I know it's a lot. We wanted to give you an overview. We're so excited that you came. <coughs> Mr. Simpson's killing it. We're so happy community and schools are here. Really staying on top. Really being a partner in your student's journey, and we're so grateful that you came out. If you ever have any questions, you can always call us. We are open, ready to help your babies get to where they need to go. Thank you. Oh, now I'm going to tell them Mr. Bouchon, because I was going to go to, you, you want to do your thing right there real quick? Okay. You going to let Bouchon do it? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to let Ms. Bouchon, your Catherine said she's going to have you do it. And I will introduce her parents. <laughs> All right. Hello, parents. I am with you virtually. This is 21st Century uh, Education. So I want to talk a little bit about Central Piedmont. As Ms. Manjohn said, we like to begin with the end in mind. Because we are a comprehensive, innovative high school, our students can start taking classes as early as the second semester of ninth grade. So they become a college student, and I'm chasing down the hall to do that. So right now, we uh, have 42 uh, participants in this program. So they are either taking a, uh, a class or are lined up to take classes in the fall. Those classes begin August 15th. I want to bring that to your, your attention because it starts two weeks before school starts. So as a college student, I have to follow Central Piedmont schedule. And I do want to show you, so I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you just a little bit of what they see, and I will be brief. But I want you to have an idea of uh, some of the things that I have them do. So the dual enrollment program is coupled with Central Piedmont, and we have a total website that Catherine will go over the steps of enrollment. She is my intern. She is also a CPCC student. Can I have my Central P, my students that are in the media center, raise their hand right now, please? I'll raise them high and proudly. <laughs> All right, so as you see, no matter where we go, we're a small school, but at least almost 50% of the school is participating in higher level, level yeah. education. These courses are free, free, free and they go with them to college. So the point of it is I'm taking high school classes and getting college credit for them because I'm taking them through Central Piedmont. So all of the information is on this website. The students will tell you they have signed up and they have to tell you they're great parents. Sorry, they are college students. Because of FERPA, they have to do the enrollment process and they become a student of the school. I have to ask them for their grades as well. So that's one piece that we want to understand. Uh, some of the things that Ms. Manjohn talked about, and Armand did a great job talking about the CTE pathway. That is financial planning. We are a business pathway at PLC where we have uh, principles of business and finance. We have entrepreneur and financial planning. So he is one of the products of the financial planning course. We believe in college and career readiness, whatever that looks like for any of the students. Everyone will not attend a four-year college, so Central Piedmont is a great option to that. Right now, we're bridging nine students to um, Central Piedmont, so we're proud about that. Uh, we have two students that are coming for internships with Bridge Builder. That's a construction uh, company. So I tell the students when we have internships that they would be eligible for and 
the requirements. And I generally put that information on the PLC resource page. Another thing I want to bring your attention to is Naviance. Naviance is district led. This is the initiative that they want the students to start being college and career ready and tracking that data. So where you see here, you see information about colleges, careers, connections. We track their scholarships that they get. They are able to see what they're interested in and look into schools. And their site looks similar to this. So we are working towards putting tasks on there for them. Right now they have the task, if they are a senior, to upload any scholarship information. So we are able to track what they are doing in their interest area as well. So Naviance, ask your students about Naviance or Central Piedmont courses. If they are interested in college and career, I'm going to let Catherine introduce the steps of the Central Piedmont enrollment. Are you ready, Catherine? <laughs> what is step one, Catherine? So step one is to attend uh, career and college science information. This is basically to explain um, to you guys and to the students what it is to be um, a dual enrollment student. Uh, basically like an, or or an overview of what it's going to be and also um, basically introducing and see if your child is up to it and if you guys agree with what's going on. Step two. I'm sorry. Can you click it, please? Oh, step two is uh, the application process. Okay. I'll just tell you that. So uh, this is the, as you said, the application process. This is basically where you apply to CPCC and you let them know, hey, I'm so and so, and I want to be a student at CPCC. Then step three, step the three transcript is to request your transcript. Uh, you will use the CFNC website that uh, Ms. Dotson mentioned earlier. This is for your high school transcript, so CPC can have an idea of your grades and what kind of student you are academically. Then, um, Step four, to merge your account. To merge your account, um, this is basically where you actually get to create your email. Well, no, your email is going to be, but your email and your CPC username. Uh, this will be used to actually access Brightspace, which is a program kind of like Canvas. You guys are familiar with Canvas. It is basically the Canvas of CPCC. And um, also access to your email, you should ch be checking your uh, email at least once a week to be updated with everything that's going on in your classes, as well as in the school itself. Step five, to meet with your CDC. This is basically when you get on Mr. Sean, you're going to tell her ideal uh, steps one through four. Um, I'm interested in this career path. What do you have? Step six is... Um, Placement tests, which we, we do not have to do placement tests because we are a comprehensive, innovative high school. Other high schools that students would want to attend, this is all over the CMS, but at, at PLC, they can start in ninth grade. Any other school, they cannot start until the 11th grade. So that's a step up. If our students start early, they can have an associate's degree or real close to it by the time they graduate high school. All right, step seven is nine. CMS students, we don't need that. Tell them about the orientation process. So that is step eight, the required CCC orientation and advising process. This is basically a presentation letting you know that these are the requirements to be a CPCC student. It's letting you know um, their motto, how they roll. And then at the end, I believe there's a 25 question quiz to prove that you have learned, prove that you have went through the slideshow and that you are ready to accept the responsibility of being a dual enrollment student. And step nine. Register for your classes. Remember when you went to go talk to Mr. Shah? Yeah, so now you're gonna actually be able to register for those classes that you want to be interested in and go for that pathway and start the uh, dual enrollment process. And then step 10 does not pertain to us because we are a comprehensive, innovative high school, so we play, pay the tuition and the books. The only time fees are involved are during the summer, and that's for any school. So I do not suggest students take classes during the summer because those fees can be kind of uh, not, uh, kind of accelerated. So 
I, I prefer free, free, free. <laughs> All right, so those are the steps. Anything else, um, Catherine, that you can tell these parents? You have taken several classes now, and I'm very proud of you, especially your certification. Tell them the grade you came out with this last grade. Um, this last class that I took is called Enter the Computer. Um, I earned a certification as a Microsoft Essential User in PowerPoint, Word, and Excel. Um, I already had my Microsoft Office specialization uh, last year for PowerPoint and Word 2016, so that I am double silver certified. Right. So again, this is why it's important to have our students to explore careers early on. Uh, I know that Catherine wants to work at, in the business field, so I have her intern for me. I don't have to do anything. When a student comes in, she takes over. She can take them through the steps. She shows them and troubleshoots anything. She probably knows the process better than me. Just, <laughs> just, just be real. Uh, so I am so proud of her that she has this adult certification. There are a lot of adults that do not have their Microsoft certification. So to turn it over to the next presenter, I just, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please reach out. You go. You go. Hi, my name is Shekinah, and basically, I'm just here to tell y'all about like the CPCC um, courses and how I came from a bigger school to a smaller school. Um, so, I came from North Mac, and then I came here in September, and it's been like a really big change, but I'm glad that I came here because it was a lot of different opportunities that were opened up, like dual enrollment, which I came from IB, so I had a lot of extra credit. So when I came here, I could graduate early, but I decided I wanted to do dual enrollment, stay in, and try and graduate my associate's degree. So, yeah, and with CPCC, you know, people upcoming that's going to be a CPCC. I would say, please, please do not just pick any CPCC class. Because if you pick, like, if you're not good in math and then you pick a account class, you're obviously going to do bad in that because you're not good at math. So pick something that you're good in and make sure you're communicating with your professors. Some of them, oh, some of those professors are really cutthroat, so you really got to <laughs> communicate with them because if you don't communicate and if you don't have the receipt, it's going to be harder for you. <laughs> oh my gosh, you can see me. <laughs> I ain't talking to you, Miss Rashad. <laughs> anyway. Oh what are you talking about? <laughs> if you don't talk to your professors and have those receipts, it's going to be harder for Miss Rashad to do her job when you come to her and say, I'm doing bad in this class because my professor, da 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 da. Whatever, so yeah, that, that's my experience. Hello, guys, my name is Rain Love. Um, just like I, I came from a big school to a small school, I came from West Mac. I don't know if you guys heard of West Mac, but West Mac is not a ghetto. Ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it's ghetto, and not gonna lie, I was feeling bad, real, real bad. I came to PLC, and as soon as I got here, Miss Miss I was just basically like, "Why are you here? Um, you know, what's your grades looking like?" I was like, "I don't, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can graduate because my GPA is not how it's supposed to be. My grades are bad. I'm doing this." She said, "No." She told me, "Don't say I can't. I can't. I can't. I won't." Da 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 da. So she said that I got my grades right. I'm taking CPC classes next year, starting my senior year. Um, I could have graduated early, but since the, my grades, my GPA wasn't good. I wasn't going to do that because I want to go to college and become a doctor. So I'm going to do CPC classes. I'm on the verge of AP Honor Road at the moment. At one point, I was going to AP Honor Road. At one point. Um, but PLC didn't help a lot. They really do help. You get that one on one time with them. You know what I'm saying? It helps you. They help you so much. They help you so much. Like, literally. What you get at a bit, what you get at a bit school, you cannot get here. You can't get that one on one time with them helping you, you know, visually learning. The little, you know what I'm saying? Just <laughs> PLC is a really good school. Send your nieces, nephews, 
Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. But, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. He muted it. two things that I'm I'm a part of and like so basically I'll talk about student le leadership so basically leadership is basically like thing is about this school we don't have we didn't you not have student council none that because we have leadership so basically we're in charge of doing like spirit week we in charge of that like we're playing like bill day we plan that oh over here <laughs> sorry about that we plan that we plan all that, so um, anything that has to do with like school extracurricular extra, 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 uh, extra, uh, <laughs> activities, we we're, we're, we're basically helping her with it, in charge of that with her. So um, that's one thing we do. Peer review board, um, that's one thing I'm a part of too. So basically, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of ISS suspension for stuff that like for like skipping, like basically being disrespectful, like oh like all minor stuff, like minor that um that um that you don't even need to go to I oh go to like three days ISS for. They're passionate. Rima is a a singer. She needs to go volunteer and work at these camps or, or go and find out at these homes or what have you. What can she do? If you're in any kind of religious affiliation, you can volunteer through that. I had my kids do, it's a huge, being part of the um, um, Charlotte um, student government, like they go, they join it, and I, reminding me guys to get it to you so that you can help me quiet. Remind me to give it to you so you can go and join it because it's fantastic. They go to student government and they go uptown every week. They meet the mayor, they meet um, the district attorney, they go to all the things, everything that functions, that makes, Charlotte work. You meet people, you get in contacts. My daughter was a page for the for the uh, governor, for the state senate, and for the House of Representatives. And you go up to Raleigh and they pay you. These are the things you need to be active and then you're able to put that down on your resume. Right? And that's beyond, that's not a test. Anybody can do it. And if you're interested and you're advocating, you can do that. So we're going to really start pushing that next year also. But think about it now in the summer, find things for them to do. And I'm going to send them home with a volunteer link that will keep track of all of their volunteer hours. And when you make that resume up, you have that to put on it. That's a big deal. So that can counter that issue with the test. I, I, I appreciate it. I was, again, wondering, I was more wondering, especially for her dad, because she's wanting to do she just talked to my aunt about it, uh, the nursing program with like candy stripes, but I think she said it has to be like a teacher has to refer because she's wanting to to do that, you know, particular program and to get in there. And I want to thank all y'all, because I ain't gonna lie, I just told uh, Mr. Kanye today, not y'all, but the 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 lady that gets in charge of it, I felt wasn't pushing them. I got people who like in 11th grade, like here we go 12, who's already doing college tours right. or doing other stuff. And these kids, you know, and it says not. So I was trying to figure out where you guys were in that process. So today, that really helped me to see that sense, because I really want her to go to school. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. She's going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question. How, um, all of these students here seem pretty brilliant, especially <laughs> Jakaya. Um, <laughs> how, um, how does it work with students that come in um, that may have IUP, uh, IUP, IUP. Mm -hmm. um, and who really are struggling, but do want to go to, um, want to attempt to try higher education, and their parents are pushing them for higher education, um, but they have a learning disability. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Absolutely. And when can, when can, 
you start kind of transitioning them, I don't know. We're going to treat them just like we treat any other students because all our babies are unique. Appalachia State has a great program for students with IEPs, um, 504s, and it will follow them throughout college. It's um, the ARC services, it's different services, and um, they go to school too. Mm -hmm. So, so we're just, yeah. the mm -hmm. things are just going to be modified, and they have to really be their advocate, and the parents have to really stand behind them. You want to sign up for that program. But it's so many different opportunities. They can go to any campus they want to go to. They'll have, and, they, and it, you can apply and have that, that 504, that IEP, what have you put in. And if your student is not really sure about it, um, CPCC has great programs to get them in. So if there's remediation, if we need to kind of work on study skills, JCSU has a really good program too. Big program right now that they're taking in kids who are not at those twos but we'll take them in, in college and get them set up to be able to master college classes. But maybe for that first year, it's like a program that gets them ready. So no, there's a lot of different opportunities out there. Go ahead. Ms. Ms. Man John, mm -hmm. if I could chime in as yes, well. Absolutely. Um, when we look at the CDC Career Development Coordinator, we look at interest inventory. We look at what they are strong. Some students are kinesthetic. They work better with their hands than anything. So we focus in on that as well. We don't want to discount anyone. So sometimes uh, Central Piedmont has a year up program and it starts with a grade point average of 2.2 because they've taken out all of the courses that don't represent the job. So there's no job or no career field that we don't have a, a placement for. So just finding what they're interested in, whether it's music, whether it's work with their hand in construction, whether it's automotive, there is a career for them. So keep that in mind. And I want to share something with you because my cousin, he has autism. He just graduated from CP last, last uh, week. Um, his mother passed, but um, my cousin, his sister, she's his guardian, and she said, um, this is what CP has. It's called the Independence and Literacy Education for Adults with Disabilities. And it says it has taught him skills, independent living, successful employment, and active participation in our community. Two years ago, Lindsay earned his associate's degree in criminal justice with the class of 2020 at Central Piedmont. This is my little cousin. But this program aims to improve his interpersonal skills, money management, consumer skills, community living, job success skills, government knowledge, and computer skills. And she's just, you know, thanking our family. So he graduated our last year. Mm -hmm. And he has autism. Yeah, I think my son, the only Oh, we, I, I got, we got, I got, we got, we got, we got, we got, we got, we got, the new thing, which is big and nobody's talking about it is, um, I think my, my sister sent him a thing for eSports. Come on. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he wants to be a YouTube influencer, that's yeah. his whole. We, we are establishing the YSU from Jason's because they have e-gaming, we have a young woman who came in here. Kind of was talking about e-gaming. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah, my nephew's president of uh, e-gaming at Howard University. Oh, I know it. So, yeah, John it's a big deal. E J J and JCSU is who was supposed to be partnering. Yeah, I don't even know. I said I don't hate on no more because you got this. Exactly. 14-year-old. I know 14-year-old yeah. who got the mom yeah. that made it. Swag. Cable messed up. Yeah. The son by himself makes 70,000. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 It's no joke. We're in a new world nowadays. You can do anything with some money. And I used to beat up on mine for being on those daggone games all the time. Okay? <laughs> that was one of the reasons why we had that 2.8. But yeah, I wish I knew. <laughs> yeah, no, no, and I think we just said, no, my little thing was like I said with the YouTube, if you're somebody, uh, and that's anybody in the room, you know, right now, one, one viral thing. I watch teenagers, people that they introduced me to literally, that live a life that I wish, and that's just from me, you, and everybody just watching what they do all day and talk about it all day. Little ladder for things they do. If they keep on doing it, maybe they need to make that out of career. They're a talker. Let them be a debater. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. A lawyer. A lawyer. Because yeah. right. we got to take what they do in the school because sometimes they get called out out of town. They may be the class comedian. 
Let them make that money. Push them. <laughs> Bring that money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told Wayne that if Wayne's already, she's auditioned for the, I think, The Voice. I think I put her in the studio for fun. She did. I had a little video when she was at, at uh, Wendy's and she was singing the menu. And I said, you keep doing those stuff like that, yeah. and you don't know what goes viral, and people, you know, listen to you. She can try that shot sometimes. She sometimes. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that.